eBay, the magical land where coin collectors go in search of incredible deals, rare coins, and grab bags. You see that juicy, tempting picture of a mountain of great-looking coins. And hey, you can get some of these coins for a very low price. Seems like an amazing deal, especially for a beginner who wants to collect something, but they aren't really sure what niche they want to focus on, and they don't want to spend a lot of money for now. Is it as good as it sounds? Well, I took the bait. I purchased a lot of three ancient Greek bronze coins out of this pile you see on the screen for $40. This averages out uh, $13.4 per coin, including shipping, mind you. This is a very good price by the time this video is published. And if we take some time to look into this picture and look at some of the coins in the seller's listing, this, this is great quality stuff. Some of these are absolutely worth more than $13.4 if sold individually. I'm highlighting on screen now some remarkably sharp coins in this pile from uh, just a quick glance. Most, if not all of them, seem to be late Seleucid bronzes. These are common coins, so no jackpots or, or super rare coins here. We're just looking for nice coins that are good value for money. I won't go over each one of the coins I see, but as you can observe, Plenty of coins here have at least on one side great details, some reasonable wear that doesn't detract from the coin's overall quality, and the vast majority seem to be problem-free. But here's the thing, this, this seems too good to be true. This seller cannot be selling these coins for a profit. But the issue is, I've been collecting for a while, I have a rough idea of how much these coins should cost. A beginner Looking for affordable coins on eBay does not, Jesus, he or she wouldn't even know if these coins are genuine. But what if I'm wrong? What if my three new coins turn out to be excellent coins that will join my collection for a great price? Well, let's find out. Let's open this little bag, see what we got, and then let's discuss the whole eBay scenario and buying grab bags later. Alright, here they are. And from a quick glance, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. It looks like this will be some $40 thrown out the window at least. I'm almost certain these are authentic at least. Let's see what we got. Okay, first coin. And this is a Phoenician bronze. Probably from Tyre or Arados. Third, maybe second century BC. And first glance, it is completely depatinated you can see the shiny bronze without any patina left. On the obverse, we have the bust of the goddess Taiki, heavily worn, and it has this sandy layer, this sandy, quote-unquote, patina. Considering the sandy patina forms above the normal metal patina, and this coin has no patina on its metallic surface, it means this sand patina is fake. So a heavily worn coin, depatinated and then repatinated, as to look better than what it is. So this coin has been tampered with. And notice behind Taiki's head, to the left, we have this hole. This is likely a hole left by bronze disease that, was re that has been removed by the seller. I don't know if the bronze disease has been properly treated, but not only this coin is not worth it, the $13.4, but it potentially has bronze disease that could reactivate and spread to other coins. So yeah, we're not out, of, out to a good start. Let's see if the reverse is any better. Now, I like the design on the reverse. It's the prow of a war galley, featuring the huge bronze spike these ships would use to ram and sink other ships. It is less worn than the obverse. It has more of the design left, but this coin sadly is already toast. It's depatinated and then repatinated in a dishonest way, and it represents a potential danger for other coins due to its bronze disease hole. So that's a total thumbs down. Next coin. This one seems to have its original patina at least. Here we have the bust of the goddess Artemis. This is a Seleucid bronze, probably from the 2nd century BC. Maybe from Demetrius I or Alexander Ballas. And once more we... We were sent a problem coin. This coin has pitting all over its surface. Wasn't for it, the wear on the design itself seems seems to be not too bad. 
and maybe it would be worth the price. But in this condition, this is another thumbs down for me. Not as bad as the first one, but still, thumbs down. The reverse is more of the same. We have the bow and quiver of Artemis at the center of the design, and the legends seem to read Basileus de... Yeah, Basileus Demetriou. Okay, that seems like Demetrius the first. Once more, not a lot of wear, actually, but the pitting just makes this coin a junk tray piece. Yeah, this coin gets a bit closer value-wise to $13.4, but still, this is much worse than what we saw on the dealer's pictures, right? Aren't we getting any of these wonderful coins we saw and we were promised? I don't know, maybe the last coin will be our quote-unquote salvation? And getting to the last coin... Uh, oh god, this is such a tragedy to a potentially wonderful little coin. This is clearly an Alexander Ballas, another 2nd century BC Seleucid bronze. This... This is a bust of Alexander wearing the skin of the Nemean lion. He has some pretty awesome designs struck during his reign. And once more, we have a problem coin. Despite the little wear on this piece, look at this awful bronze disease hole right at the center, right at Alexander's face. If this coin didn't have that, it would have easily been worth the entire lot's price. But alas, another problem coin that isn't worth that isn't worth the price, in my opinion, for the money we pay for it. But this reverse is what truly got me pissed off about this whole lot. It is entirely covered in incrustations, and it is covered in active bronze disease spots. The tiny little green dots you can see scattered around, that's bronze disease. This, this coin, although the best looking of the lot, is a ticking time bomb. And that kind of crab bag is advertised as a good value for beginners. You know what a beginner will do with these coins? He or she will put these coins with other pieces in a tray and potentially damage their collection by spreading bronze disease. This, for me, this really is unacceptable. I'm not going to say the name of the dealer, but this is clearly someone who either doesn't know anything about coins or doesn't care about collectors. So... Three coins, none of which are worth what I paid for them. Definitely not in the quality of the pictures of the lot, and even worse, problem coins that can potentially damage other bronze coins with bronze disease. This was really the worst part. One of the first advices I give to beginners is, if an offer just seems too good to be true compared to the average prices you find when doing research, it means it likely is too good to be true. The devil was in the details, my friends. Let's go back to the picture from the dealer. Sadly, it seems like this lot is composed of a ton of coins, and the seller strategically placed many of the good coins at the top of the pile in order to make the, look, the lot look more appetizing. Let me darken the good coins and highlight all of the coins that are either very worn or seem to have problems. When we stop looking at the stuff we want from these grab bag pictures and start looking at all of the rest we don't want, then we realize that the majority of the things being offered are bad stuff, not worth your money. But we just let our greed take command. Little do we know that in most cases, like mine, we end up being the fools of the whole thing. I certainly don't want to say all eBay dealers are scummy like this one, but guys, understand that this is a gamble. Numismatics is not about gambling. This is, this is not like opening up Pokemon card packs expecting a rare Pikachu to come up. There's a worrying trend developing on the numismatic market with dealers trying to gamify the whole thing, make it look like a loot box game. The vault box phenomena in US and bullion coins is, a, is an alarming example. Uh, you buy an expensive box and you have a tiny chance of getting something worth more than what you paid for in it. But you know how casinos work. The house always wins and most people just end up getting some normal coins and losing money. But you know what was even more absurd? So, a recent auction of ancient coins where the dealer announced a surprise lot. That's right, a surprise lot for an ancient coin. You're bidding for coins you don't know. Then the description is marvelous. It reads, 
This lot represents a pleasant surprise directed toward our esteemed customers. The image of this particular lot is exclusively accessible to the auction platform management and will remain undisclosed until the completion of the auction. Subsequently, the highest bidder shall be granted the privilege of acquiring this coin, which could potentially be of low or high value, thereby contributing to the overall anticipation and element of surprise. We cordially extend an invitation to participate in the bidding process for this undisclosed item. May fortune favor your endeavors. My god, feels like I'm in 16th century England. The lot received 16 bids and ended up hammering for £380, plus buyer's premium. How could anyone be sure that the dealer wouldn't just wait to see how much the final hammer price was and just pick something that would give them a profit? And if any of you watching did bid on this, my dear friend, I have a bridge to sell you. The lot ended up being reasonable good value, actually, but of course this could just be a strategy of the auction house to make the whole idea of auction gambling appealing to people. Make the first test lot a good deal, entice people to bid on the next auctions and rake up the profits from exploiting people's susceptibility to gambling. Absolutely despicable. Remember that coin collecting must be made in a conscious way. It can get addictive and grab bags, loot box like vault whatever boxes and, oh my god, so smart but so evil, surprise auction lots are just a way of exploiting people's vulnerability. I'm sorry guys, I don't want to sound harsh, but if you are a dealer, you can't do that stuff. That's evil. So my advice for beginners or maybe those who don't have a big budget. Many dealers offer group lots on their stores eBay itself is full of lots offerings as well. That's a whole different story. Even if you buy the coins from a lot unattributed, these generally have a picture, both sides of the coins. You know exactly what you're buying. The pictures are there. You're doing a conscious decision based on what you're seeing. Even if the coins don't, and, and if the coins don't match up what was offered, you have every reason to get a refund and you have photographic evidence you might also find what many dealers call junk trays or pick trays on coin shows or mm, on stores, where all coins in a box or a tray are the same price. This is also much different to just getting random grab bags. You're seeing, looking and picking the coin you want. You have control and agency. As much of a beginner as you might be, at least you're making a conscious decision based on your gut feeling that the coin you have in front of you is worth 10, 15, 20 bucks, whatever. You're looking at it. It's right in front of you. You have agency. I do buy coin lots every now and then as well, particularly for these small Greek bronzes. Here I have some coins I recently purchased from lots and some I purchased individually. And guess what? Averaging out, they were about the same price compared to what I paid for that nasty surprise at the beginning of the video, that lot. These ones average out on 16 euros per piece. A little bit more expensive, yes, but as you will see, the value you can get for coins when you can see what you're getting is a world of difference. So, first we have this humble bronze coin of King Lysimachus, one of Alexander's successors. We have a somewhat worn bust of Athena on the obverse, but it has an okay patina. Maybe it was a bit harshly cleaned, as we can see the green patina itself and the earth layer on top of it are a bit rough. But it's still an obverse with no issues, no sign of bronze disease. In the design, it's all there and clearly recognizable. Same thing for the reverse. We have this cute little lion. The patina could be a bit nicer, but it's all there. The legends Basileus Lysimaco are clearly visible and the wear is perfectly acceptable for a 16 euro coin. Next, we have this very interesting coin from the city of Misala. The obverse features three overlapping hoplite shields, very creative design. Surprisingly high relief for such a small coin. And it's also in pretty good shape. The reverse is definitely weaker than the obverse. At the center we were supposed to have the design of a sword and the inscriptions of the magistrates of the city. But even if this specimen is very worn, at least 
it doesn't have bronze disease and no major issues. And since I bought this coin mainly for the obverse, this was no real issue for me. And finally, this last coin comes from Phrygia, from the city of Apameia. In my opinion, this one was the best value for money of the entire lot. The obverse has this really great bust of Athena, wearing her armor and helmet, looking to the right. Is it in mint state? No, it is not. But for 16 euros? I'd say that's pretty good. And once more, that's something you can only get when you see the lot of coins you're buying, instead of just trusting your luck and being at the, mer at the dealer's mercy on your grab bag. The reverse is equally interesting. We have an eagle landing over a geometric design, and it is flanked by two caps of the Dioscuri, the Divine Twins. There are some inscriptions above and below the design, but sadly for these cheaper examples, it's common to find them either worn or struck out of the flan, like in this example. I don't want to scare you off eBay. It's an interesting marketplace. It is full of good dealers as well, and I would be making them an undeserved disservice for not mentioning this, but understand it is the wild, wild west of coin collecting. It has as many fakes as it has good deals, and I generally only recommend it for when you have a bit more experience distinguishing real coins from fakes. And in case you want to know how to avoid fakes, look up my channel. I have some videos with tips on how to avoid fakes. Yeah, check some of the video videos in the description. And please, collect in a healthy way. Don't fall for loot boxes, mystery grab bags, or sales strategies that introduce gambling mechanics into your collecting. Assembling a collection of ancient coins is akin to telling a story through coins. Coins that mean something to you, that connect you to the past. You must be a very interesting person already just by the fact you're interested in collecting these. Don't reduce these millennia-old objects to casino chips. It's not something for someone of your intellectual caliber. You deserve better. So yeah, ancient coin grab bags? Not for me. I'll be returning these and opening a claim against the seller. At least the price tag of $40 to potentially edu educate other collectors was worth it. What is your experience with grab bags? Let us know in the comment section down below. Happy collecting and I'll see you soon.